All right, guys. Well, I forgot to film the tent getting set up. Oh, well, I'll film it going down. But my cool light. Well, we're going to get this uh, stove started. I'll turn you around, show you that. Um, I got a good steak to cook, some potatoes. Um, it's going to be good eating. So stay tuned and we'll get this fire going, get warmed up. So I'm cheating. I'm using uh, cotton balls and a big lighter. I just want to get started going. Look at that. There's the chimney. Not really smoking. Look at the blue skies. It's getting dark. It's dark out here. I'm so hungry though. It's cool, right? Last one. Last trip. Open ale for this. Damn it. Come on, man. Stop killing me here. Potatoes are in. Get those cooking a little bit. And uh, let me stoke this fire up, get it burning. Get it going. Cook those potatoes. Go. We got the potatoes cooking. We got a beautiful ribeye. There's some Montreal steak seasoning on it. Um, but yeah, those potatoes look. It's gonna be a while before the water boils. Uh, cooking on a stove is a little bit different than cooking on a fire. It's not as hot. Doesn't get as hot. So it takes a little bit longer to uh, to um, boil water and stuff, but I know we'll see. Uh, I don't know. There's my wood pile right there. I don't know if I've got enough. I'll have to. I might have to just um, take it easy tonight on the fire, just because uh, I want some for the morning. I don't want to cut up wood in the morning, so probably save me enough to make me some coffee and but I'll probably just run this till I don't know 10 or so and then shut her down and go to bed uh, but yeah got the potatoes on got the fire drop you down let you look cool right I like it Awesome. Anyway. Well, I got the steak on finally. The potatoes are, uh, they're done. Check them out. Steak is cooking. Flip it over here in a second right now. Thick one, man. Big one. It's gonna taste good. Oh, look at the pipe. I got it going red hot here. There it is. I take my steak uh, medium rare. I put a little butter in there to try and butter it up because... I usually just put it on the top when after it's done cooking and it's rested. I usually stick a little bit of butter on top of it, let it melt in. I figure I'd put it in the pan, I don't know, maybe cooking the butter. But 
it's hot in here now. Forty-five degrees. That's away from the fire. I'm kind of by the fire. You can kind of see how close I am. About a foot and a half. Good. Well, there it is, guys. Ribeye steak and potatoes. Big old steak and nice fire. Feels good, man. I gotta adjust that damper a little bit, though. It's got a little damper there. And it's got a... You can see it right there, the vent. Just gonna slow down the fire a little bit. So it doesn't burn so hot and so much wood. It just kind of... We'll keep it a nice temperature in here but uh yeah i gotta do my dishes and then uh and then we'll hang out a little bit more what is up guys oh it's chilly 6 30. i uh i slept through most of the night i woke up at uh i think uh, like around one, one or three, I think it was three, and stoked the fire back up. And, and now I just woke up about six o'clock and uh, um, stoked the fire back up. It was really down. I I blew it back into into in the flames though. With all there was still hot ashes, and uh, it's it's coffee time, man. I need some coffee. Uh, but I'll pen you, I'll uh, set you up on the tripod and we'll make some coffee. We'll get going for the day. I think I'm going to stay up here for a couple hours and then head home. I'm not gonna, I'm not in a big hurry to get home. Uh, but uh, yeah, stay with me. Some coffee. Coffee now and then we'll make some eggs and, and toast and stuff. So come back. Coffee time. Got my old school percolator here. This is my favorite way to make coffee. Favorite way to make coffee. I like a French press. I got a French press I use every day if I just want a cup. It's real quick and easy. Um, I've got one of those Craig's even faster. Craig, Craig. And then I got the percolator. So this, you can see, I just put a filter in there and then the coffee grounds. This slides over the top inside. The lid goes on. I'm gonna try out this uh, try this this is a plate you can remove so you can have direct heat on your shoes so let's see how long it takes to that's cold water man that's finally warming up in here now So guys, what's your, leave in the comment, what's your guys' favorite, uh, favorite way to make a cup of coffee? You guys, a French press or what, what a, a, an automatic uh, coffee maker? What, what do you, how do you guys prefer your coffee? Leave in the comments, I'd like to know. That'd be cool to know. Yeah, this is, this is like, this is like old cowboy shit. Way, you know, this is cowboy shit. And I've had this percolator for a while. Look how, look how bad it, I mean, from the fire, from fire pit, sticking in the fire, just turned black. It looks cool, man. It's got some good patina. Good patina. That means I need to damper it down a little bit.
damper that down. It should keep the heat in. Not burn up my wood so fast. But, but I feel like I should get it raging so this uh, coffee will percolate. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. Plus when the fire is really hot, it uh, breaks down all the coals into ash. Um, I notice when I when I damper damper the stove down and it slows the the flames down and it's not getting a lot of oxygen. It's not burning really hot. The coals don't burn down into ash, and so my my fire the stove fills up with ashes. And it, it shouldn't be like that. The coals should burn down into ash, and so I. I don't think the fire's hot enough to burn down those, so that's another thing you gotta you gotta play with. All right, guys, uh, coffee's percolating, so it's gonna let it do its thing for a minute, and uh, gonna get some eggs on. Sun's uh, sun's not gonna come out for a while. Sun doesn't usually hit here till about. 11 so but anyway um i can smell it smells so good oh it smells so good but I, all in all i had a good night slept good this uh military extreme cold weather bag this one right here freaking warm as shit man i wouldn't i didn't even get chilled at all not at all and it's good for you know, for sled camping or stuff like that. Because it, it's too big and bulky. I'll show you when I pack it up. It's too big and bulky to backpack with. So, um, but it is it's pretty awesome. It's pretty it's thick. Freaking thick. Roomy. Lots of room. Anyway. So here's one of my mats that I use. You can see it. Pretty awesome. This one's not felt. The other one I made are, are made of felt, so they'll be a little bit softer, but I just some old material I had left over. And yeah, that's it. This is this is the camp. The extreme cold weather bag. I close the wood. Used a little bit of wood. That's percolating. I think it looks pretty done though. My miscellaneous crap, my bag, tripod. So, yeah, I think this coffee's just about ready. I know it's ready. Get this off the heat. Had some coffee. Oops, sorry. Got some coffee now. Probably too hot to drink. But yeah, this is the stove jack light. This is the tent. This is it. There it is, guys. On the stove top. Toast, eggs, coffee, a great deal. It's good. Really good. I'm going to sit down and eat this. I've already started. Sit by the fire, burn some of this wood up, hang out, and do some other stuff.
Well guys, this has been fun. I'm glad I gotta do one more one more trip, but here's what it comes down to. This is the sit man. I got one right here on the ground. Perfect man. So it's it's felt so it's nice and soft. And this brown is like a canvas, a rubberized canvas kind of is what I want to kind of say it is. It's kind of like that. So go check this out. Go to my giveaway video and watch that one. Leave a comment that you want in or whatever. Leave a cool comment. You know, tell somebody, I, I don't know, like, share, and subscribe. You know what I mean? I, I want to get my numbers up and I'm trying to I'm gonna try and put more videos out so I got way, way more out there. And, uh, me, me and the wife got some cool plans for uh, in May. We're gonna go from where we live in Utah down to Arizona and across into New Mexico, and then we're gonna come back up through Colorado and then shoot over back into Utah and, and then home. It's a uh, the round trip is about 1,300 miles. We're going to load the truck up, uh, put the camper on the in the back. We've we got a camper that, that goes in the back of the truck. Um, so we're, that's what we're going to do, a little road trip. We're gonna, I'm going to document everything. It's going to be sweet. So, so, yeah, I got some stuff coming up, but I'm going to try and get one more hot tent video out before the snow leaves there's there's a good 18 16 18 inches here right now so i can probably squeeze one more in next week so i'll do that for sure but this is this is what i i came for is this this nice felt kneel pad uh sit pad a uh, foot pad like i know like in your hammock uh hammock camping whatever just put this at the base of your at the base of your thing take your boots off it's out of the cold it's out of the wet i mean you know it's, it's just it's handy for so many things i mean i love mine mine's a big one i made some big ones and i'm probably going to send those out to some people that i think deserve it uh but yeah i mean they're they're not nothing special but i made it you know, on my sewing machine. Yeah, have a sewing machine. It's all right. I can admit I can sew. Kinda. <laughs> You'll see. My sew job is not the greatest, but well. And the knife. The knife. Knife leather sheath. It's a dangler. I got a fell rod hooked to it. And like I was saying, I just used a uh, hair tie. And. Uh, cut some gorilla tape or ripped it in half and then wrapped around the end and so that makes this rubber uh, lanyard I guess you would call it slide it in this in the loop and then take the hair tie hook it around the ferro rod and that thing is not it's not coming out and the ferro rod is pretty tight as it is but with that it's just it can't fall out no way there's no way but uh, so here's the knife the uh, city slicker oak handles three cup three three sixteenth steel uh, 1095 steel on the is the bl is the is the blade on it uh, I don't have a tape measure with me I probably want to say that's around seven inches probably a cutting blade length is probably around three half three and three quarters um but it doesn't matter it, it's a giveaway you guys are getting it for free so i i don't I, I don't need it you guys can measure it when you get it whoever wins it but yeah it's it's nice leather you know did a real good job stitching it putting the lanyard hole or the dangler on there and it is it does snap so yeah again the city slicker the city slicker lanyard hole pommel 
Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's hot in here now, man. How hot is it? Well, this says four degrees Celsius, so I know it's warmer in here. Now let's let's set this let's set this right here and see exactly how warm it really gets. Cause it says forty, it, but it, it's warmer than forty. It's right. And all in all, I'm pretty stoked about the stove. It works great. I got some kind of... I don't know. Oh, the axe for today. For this trip, the Grand Force Books. The Grand Force Brooks Small Forest Axe. The Mercedes Benz of Axes. It's not a Lamborghini, not a Ferrari, maybe BMW, Mercedes, maybe. There's more expensive axes out there, probably better quality. Some, but this this thing, old faithful, you know, it's just it's it's a little bit pricey, but not not astronomically pricey. It's cool. It's hand forged. It's got it's got the maker's mark. My my maker's mark is MB on mine. Comes with the a nice a nice sheath. The sheath is has a welt in it, so you're not gonna ruin the blade with these uh, rivets. With the rivets right there. But uh, it's getting. It's getting a patina on it now so from using it so much uh, and you know from the sap and the and the dirt from your hands getting on the handle it just uh, adds character to the uh, to the handle I love this axe um, there's a company up in a town called Heber it's probably about 45 minutes away from where I live um, it's a, a knife shop and I went, I was up there when I was doing a, an event and I saw this blade shop in, in this town. I stopped in there and they had, they carried Grand Forest Brooks and, and they had a Scandinavian ax there. I was like, oh man, the, the Scandinavian Grand Forest Brooks Scandinavian ax. Like, oh man. Two hundred forty dollars or something like that, and uh, I couldn't get it. It was just not in the budget for me to have it right then. So I be, had been working a lot of overtime, and I had some money saved up. And I, so I called up there. I said, "Hey, do you have any uh, Grand Force Brooks uh, Scandinavian axes?" He's like, "I just sold the last one yesterday." Um, you, I'll take down your number and uh, I'll call you if we get one. I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, I wasn't expecting him to call me back, but about a month later, that was this week, Monday, about a month later, he called me and says, hey, Kevin, this is Kevin, yeah. Uh, we have some Scandinavian axes in if you, if you still want one. I was like, yeah, I do want one. Um, so, but now it's not in my budget again. So hopefully, maybe next paycheck or the check, paycheck after that, I can I can go up there and get that. That's kind of like the only axe that I really really want. That uh, that that I want to add to my collection. It's a, it's a little bit bigger than this one. It's probably about like this big. I think this is a 19 inch handle. I think uh, the Scandinavian's around 22 or 24. So don't quote me on that. I, I'm not I'm not for sure. But I think it's 22 to 22 to 24, somewhere in that range. But uh, <laughs> that one to me would be perfect for like, uh, got that. Um, my, Possible bag 
uh, the Hidden Woodsman. Dude, this thing is awesome. Uh, it uh, holds so much stuff. It's durable. This thing really seriously goes with me everywhere because it has everything and knife, fire starter. And Mr. Malcolm's thing, look at all that stuff. Fits in that bag. Crazy, right? Crazy. the house you know it's so nice outside so I don't know why people want to sit home and play video games when you could be out here doing this you know it's great It. We got a we got one more hot tin in, but I think I think we might could get one more. There's still good 16 to 18 inches now. I'm not kidding. When I came up here the last weekend, there was no snow. We got pounded hard, but. Maybe I'll bring my wife next time, see if she wants to go. But uh, yeah, it's good. It's really good. I love being out here. So much fun. Anyway, it's been real and it's been fun. And it's been real fun. We'll see you on the next one.